In 1728, George Eastall first used the term gastritis to describe inflammation of the inner lining of the stomach. This lining, known as the gastric mucosa, contains glands that produce acidic gastric juice, which contributes to the chemical digestion of food. A thick layer of mucus protects the lining of the stomach and helps prevent gastric juice from dissolving it. Due its duration, gastritis can be acute or chronic. The first begins suddenly and lasts for a few hours to a few days. The second is long-lasting, and if left untreated, it can persist for years or even a lifetime. Due to the type of lesions, gastritis can be erosive or non-erosive. In erosive gastritis, the lining of the stomach wears down, and erosions, superficial tears, or ulcers occur. In non-erosive gastritis, there is inflammation in the lining of the stomach, but there are no erosions or ulcers. The most common causes of gastritis include helicobacter pylori infection, damage to the stomach lining leading to reactive gastritis and an autoimmune response. 1. Helicobacter pylori infection In the past, gastritis was thought by many clinicians to be a useful histological finding, but not a disease. However, that criterion changed in 1982 when Warren and Marshall discovered the bacterium Helicobacter pylori, a gram-negative bacillus that has two to six flagella. This microorganism gives rise to most cases of gastritis. Helicobacter pylori gastritis generally begins as an acute gastritis in the antrum of the stomach and causes severe inflammation. Over time, it can spread to the entire gastric mucosa and cause chronic gastritis. Helicobacter pylori infection is generally acquired in childhood, and it is estimated that 50% of the world's population is infected, but the vast majority do not develop significant clinical complications. 2. Damage of the stomach lining leading to reactive gastritis Some people suffer from reactive gastritis, which is an acute or chronic injury to the gastric mucosa, which can lead to erosions and cause little or no inflammation. The causes of reactive gastritis include frequent consumption of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ketorolac, acetylsalicylic acid, and naproxen, intake of alcoholic beverages, presence of bile fluid reflux, and reaction to stress, caused by traumatic injuries, serious illnesses, and major surgery. And three, autoimmune response. Autoimmune gastritis is chronic and typically non-erosive. Here, the immune system improperly attacks certain types of healthy cells in the gastric lining, causing inflammation and gastric atrophy. Other less common causes of gastritis include Crohn's disease, sarcoidosis, allergies to certain foods, and infections from viruses, parasites, fungi, and bacteria other than Helicobacter pylori. Many people with gastritis do not develop signs or symptoms. However, when they do occur, they can include feeling of an empty stomach, discomfort or pain in the upper abdomen, nausea, vomiting, and belching. Erosive gastritis lesions can cause gastric bleeding, the symptoms of which may be shortness of breath, dizziness or feeling faint, vomit with red blood, black stools, weakness, and paleness. In general terms, acute gastritis does not cause complications. However, in rare cases, acute stress gastritis can cause severe gastric bleeding. On the other hand, complications of chronic gastritis can include peptic ulcers, which are sores that affect the lining of the stomach or duodenum, atrophic gastritis, which occurs when chronic inflammation causes loss of the stomach lining. Anemia, erosive gastritis can cause chronic bleeding in the stomach, and blood loss can lead to anemia, and neoplasms in the lining of the stomach. Chronic gastritis increases the probability of developing tumors, benign or malignant, in the lining of the stomach. The diagnosis of gastritis is suspected based on the clinical history and physical examination, and its confirmation is established with an endoscopic biopsy. The treatment of gastritis at home, which is very simple, includes general measures and natural remedies. And if you like to take care of your health, I really invite you to subscribe to this channel, where you will continue to find valuable information. General measures are intended to eliminate the causes that gave rise to gastritis and include 
Do not miss out on food. Eat at least three meals a day without fail on schedule. Do not drink caffeinated coffee, soda pop, or alcoholic beverages. Eliminate or minimize the consumption of pain relievers that irritate the stomach, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. If an analgesic is required, acetaminophen will be preferred. And reduce stress, for which the corresponding professional support should be sought. The five main natural remedies to eliminate gastritis are described below, which have several qualities. For example, they inhibit the growth of Helicobacter pylori, promote digestion, and eliminate heartburn, nausea, and abdominal cramps. Due to the particular characteristics of people, the therapeutic response to these remedies may be different between them. Therefore, each patient can choose the remedy that he likes the most or the one with which he feels best. Here they go. 1. Fresh ginger juice. To make it, you must use a juice extractor and go through it. 2 carrots, 4 stacks of celery, half an apple, which can be substituted for orange or melon, and a piece of fresh ginger, equivalent to 1 or 2 grams of the dried product. You should take a portion before breakfast and another before going to bed. 2. Licorice or elderberry tea. It is prepared in the following way. Boil 10 grams of dried licorice root in 1 liter of water for 10 minutes. Let it rest covered for about 20 minutes and strain. This preparation should be taken divided into 3 doses per day before or after meals. 3. Guachala latte tea. Its mode of preparation is like this. Boil in a liter and a half of water for 10 minutes, 1 tablespoon of guachala latte, 1 tablespoon of tlalchichinole, and 1 tablespoon of cancerin. Let the preparation stand covered for 15 minutes and strain. It should be taken throughout the day as water for use. 4. Raw Potato Juice Its preparation requires 2 or 3 raw potatoes and 150 milliliters of warm water. The potatoes are peeled, ground, mixed in the water and left to rest overnight. The next day, the preparation is strained and a cup is taken 30 minutes before breakfast and another 30 minutes before dinner. And 5. Aloe and apple juice. The required ingredients are 1 apple peeled and cored, the pulp of an aloe leaf, 1 glass of water, and sugar to taste. The ingredients are mixed in the blender and that's it. It is recommended to have a glass daily in the morning. Whatever the remedy of choice, it should be taken for two to four weeks. As a precautionary measure, these remedies are not recommended in pregnant women, in children under two years of age, or in people taking blood thinners. Now, for people who prefer biomedicine, there are different treatment schemes. The main drugs that reduce gastric acid are the following. 1. Antacids, which are usually made up of different combinations of three basic salts, magnesium, aluminum, and calcium, along with hydroxide or bicarbonate ions to neutralize stomach acid. 2. Proton pump inhibitors, which decrease gastric secretion by inhibiting the proton pump located in the gastric parietal cells. The main of them are omeprazole, lansoprazole, and pantoprazole. And 3. H2 blockers. They inhibit acid production by blocking histamine H2 receptors found in the parietal cells of the stomach. Famotidine and cimetidine are examples of this. Regarding the treatment of the underlying cause, when gastritis is caused, let's say, by infection with Helicobacter pylori, one of the following schemes might be indicated. First line, second line, and third line. As for reactive gastritis, risk factors should be avoided. For example, if the cause is long-term use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they should be discontinued and painkillers changed. In case of stress gastritis, the corresponding therapy for stress should be indicated. In all cases, it will be the doctor who determines the medications to be taken, as well as the doses and duration of the treatment, according to the particular characteristics of each patient. In order to avoid recurrences after the basic treatment, it is recommended to eat at least three meals a day and to consume regularly, in addition, the following foods which are nutritious and delicious. 1. Probiotics. 
Some of the foods that contain them are jugger, kefir, and sweet and sour cucumbers, among others. 2. Vitamin C. Some of the fruits and vegetables with the most vitamin C are melon, citrus fruits, berries, and broccoli. 3. Vitamin E. Foods rich in this are nuts, for example, walnuts, almonds, and hazelnuts, and seeds such as sunflower, sesame, and flax. 4. Banana and pear juice. Stomach cells create a thicker barrier against acid when these fruits are consumed. And 5. Banana and papaya juice, which also can be consumed with plain yogurt or skimmed milk. Finally, it is recommended to avoid irritating foods or beverages such as coffee, tea, chocolate, soda, spicy food and alcohol. And that's it, let's enjoy life without gastritis.